What up, what up guys, it's Justin Romont here bringing you another video and this time I want to go over my export settings for Premiere Pro to go on YouTube. These settings I found have worked best to get the highest quality video to put on YouTube, so let's dive right into it. Alright, so whenever you have a video that's ready to be exported, you want to hit I and O to set the in and out points for the beginning and end of the video. That's going to tell Premiere Pro that this is exactly what you want to export. So once you've done that, go to File, Export, Media. It's gonna pop up the screen that shows the export settings. Then you wanna go to select the format, and the format you always wanna export in is H.264. That's much higher quality than MP4 or QuickTime, thing like that. So on the preset, click the drop down, and for now, click Match Source, High bit rate. The bit rate is basically going to tell you how high quality of video that's going to be exported. So a lower bit rate would be a lower quality video, a higher bit rate would be a higher quality video. Make sure to click on the output name. Change the file name to exactly what you want it to be. YouTube does look at this data, but try to make the file output the same as the title of your video. And make sure you know what folder it's being saved into and then click OK. Then you want to minimize that tab so you can really see the next tab, which is video settings. Hopefully you're exporting in 1920 by 1080 p to get HD video, but if you had clicked on the match source high bitrate, it's already going to be preset to export it in the frame size that you want. Now make sure the frame rate matches the frame rate of the video and then scroll down. On the level, I always select 5.1. The higher the level, the better the quality. It kind of defaults to 4.1. I just upgrade that to 5.1. Then you go down to bitrate settings. Bitrate, like we said, is going to determine the quality of video that's exported. What I used to do was export in CBR. CBR stands for constant bitrate. So when Premiere Pro is going through and exporting and encoding your video, it's going to keep a constant bitrate throughout the entire thing. That's really good, it does produce high quality videos, but it also makes your file size massive. So what you wanna do is select on VBR, which is variable bitrate, and then you wanna do two pass, because that means Premiere Pro is gonna go through the video twice to ensure that it has the right bitrate for the scene and everything. So what you wanna do is set your target bitrate to 10. YouTube recommends around eight, so I just bump it up to. Depending on the motion graphics that you have and like the, the mega bytes per second you filmed in, I set my maximum bit rate to 25. So as it's going through, if it needs to increase the bit rate because of the quality of the video or the frame rate or the motion graphics, it will do that. You want to always click on the render at maximum depth. By default, it doesn't do this. So when you check the box, it's going to give you the highest quality video. The only other thing that I do is I go to audio at this point and I make sure that it is set AAC, which is a lot higher quality than MPEG. And then I look at the Hertz. I make sure it's set at 48,000 Hertz. Audio is a big deal when it comes to making videos. If it's not high quality audio, people are gonna click away. Lastly, once all that's done, I go to the bottom and I click use maximum render quality. Again, by default, Premiere Pro doesn't select this for you. So if you click on it, it will take a little bit more time, but it will be worth the time. It's gonna produce a lot higher quality video for you. In time interpolation, I do select on the drop down. By default, it says frame sampling. I select on optical flow. What that does is it tells Premiere Pro that when it's going through it, if there's any speed settings that you've changed, such as slow motion or, or time lapses, it's gonna make that optical flow. So it basically will create frames for you that are based on the previous frames. So it'll give you the most smooth looking video. And then you click export and let it take its time. You know, it could take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes for like a one minute video and then you just multiply that out. Well, that's it y'all. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I am gonna be going to a conference. We leave tonight, we go to Houston and then talking about video marketing in what's called the Grow Conference. So we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna vlog it. So stay tuned for the next vlog. That'll be posted in the next couple days. If you found this video helpful, like and comment below. And then as always, if you like my content, consider subscribing.